Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As forecasted, Saturday night was clear and I got a chance to test out my new budget electronic focuser Gemini right over here. Well, at the beginning I had some problems with it that I resolved later and uh, let's talk about this in this video. In the comments of my previous video about the focuser, some people were concerned about the backlash. What can I say guys? You were absolutely right. On the screen you see the recording of my mini PC from the last night and after I ran my first autofocus sequence in Nina, I noticed right away that the image was far from being in focus and the graph of the parabola looked weird. So based on the graph, especially on this right part, I could say that there was a backlash. Now you see if uh, Nina thinks that it moved the focuser, I think I did like a hundred steps, uh, but the actual measurement didn't change and we see it on the right side. The Nini thinks that it moved focuser like uh, two times a hundred steps each time, but the actual measurement of stars didn't change. So it's likely because of the backlash problem as the motor didn't actually change the position of the focuser and we can see it here. So since there is the backlash, it results the, in the fact that Nina thinks that the image is in focus but we can definitely say without a doubt that uh, these stars and the image overall is not in focus. To confirm that, I focused my telescope using a button of mask, made sure that the telescope is in focus. What I did then is let the telescope run 500 steps forward, then 500 steps back, and if there is no backlash, I should have received exactly the same image with perfect spikes. That basically tells me that the image is in focus, but in fact, I got this image. So once again, this image is the one that shows the telescope is in focus. And this image is a result of running the telescope 500 steps forward and 500 steps back. As you see, the focuser has the backlash. Now, luckily, there are ways how you can uh, resolve this issue and it's called backlash compensation, where basically you need to measure the backlash on your focuser and uh, set this like additional steps that the telescope needs to run in order to compensate for the backlash either in the settings of the focuser or in the settings of the sequence that you use, such as Nina, for example. And uh, once you compensate for the backlash, then you should never have basically any problems with running uh, the autofocus using your electronic focuser. And that's basically what I did. So with the backlash compensation applied, the parabola graph on the autofocus sequence looked much better and I did a test exposure with the button of mask. On the screen you can see an image captured using a button of mask after the finished autofocus sequencer that was completed with backlash compensation applied. So yeah, the image is in focus and uh, here is how 5 minute exposure looks like. As you can see all the stars, everything looks good and uh, the details, I think I will zoom it in, yep, everything also looks pretty good on this image. After I set backlash compensation, I haven't had any issues with running out of focus using this electronic focuser. Uh, the motor itself, by the way, was quiet and there was no additional like vibrations, so uh, the motor was running smoothly. Yep, has a backlash, but I was compensating for it and um, overall the rest of my imaging session went pretty good guys. Now there are different ways how you can set backlash compensation. Uh, the first one is you go to options. I mean, if, I mean if you use Nina the first one there will be you go to options, autofocus and uh, here you can set your backlash compensation for inwards moving and outwards moving here. But what I did is I went to equipment section, then I went to focuser and I did my uh, backlash compensation settings in actual settings of the focuser and I set it in the ASCOM driver settings here. So in my case the backlash is 130 and uh, I to be honest have no idea if it's a lot or if, if not, but it's manageable and as you can see uh, yeah, I was able to get a nice curve that looks pretty good. Now, let me show you my imaging train so that you'll have an idea of what equipment the focuser was handling. So here is a 1x field flattener with some extension rings. And uh, over here I have a filter wheel with five 2-inch filters installed. 
and the camera I was using is ZWO2600 MC Pro. Being an APS-C size camera, it is heavier compared to cameras with the smaller sensors like uh, with the IMX 533 or uh, 294 cameras. Yeah, it's heavier. So as I said, after setting uh, the backlash compensation for the focuser, the autofocus process went smoothly and the telescope basically was handling this imaging payload pretty good, no issues with the focuser. And uh, yep, as you saw yourself guys on the images, the parabola on the autofocus graph looked good and uh, the image looked in focus, which is of course important part. So this is how my first imaging session with the new budget electronic focuser looked like. What are my first like overall thoughts about this focuser after the first night of using it? I still think that it is a good option for the price. I mean, the price is really crucial here. Yes, where you can get a ZWO focuser, you can get QHY focuser in different brands that are more expensive. And most likely you're not going to get any problems out of the box with the focuser. And uh, if you just like starting with the hobby, maybe that's the option you want to go with. But if you're buying a focuser for your second rig or the third rig, or you just need like an additional focuser, then the Gemini is something that you might want to consider buying. But keep in mind that you most likely will get a problem out of the box. Uh, like my problem was the backlash. If you're ready for measuring backlash and adjusting some settings uh, for the focuser, then yeah, that's option for you guys. And uh, as I said, it's the focuser itself at this moment is almost three times lower in price than any different focusers like CWO. And uh, if you want to save some money, then maybe that's the focuser you want to go for. And yeah, as you can see guys, I've tested my Gemini electronic focuser with a 480 millimeter telescope. Haven't had any issues after I measured backlash and they compensate for it. But what I'm planning to do is to continue my imaging sessions with this electronic focuser. And if I have any problems in the future with the focuser, of course, I will make a follow up video and let uh, you guys know about it. If you enjoyed and if you like watching this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to drop the comment, especially if there are Gemini users. Let me know user experience and let's basically let, let everybody know what this focuser is. And if there are any additional problems you have, also welcome in the comments. Uh, sharing your experience guys. Now as a reminder in the description to this video you can find a link to this electronic focuser on the AliExpress where I got it. Since I posted my previous video about the focuser the focuser itself was sold out a couple of times but I was told that they're planning to do more focusers of course so stay tuned and um, be on the lookout for this focuser to be back in stock if you're interested in getting one. And uh, in the description, there is also a link to a private, I don't know why it's private, but it's private Facebook group about Gemini products. So they also do like electronic focusers, flat panels, and a couple of more things that you can check out um, over there. Well, in the meanwhile, that's all I got for this video. If you like it and enjoy watching, please give it a like. Don't forget to hit subscribe button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. It really helps the channel a lot. I really hope to see you in future videos, guys. And until next time, clear skies.